Ladies and gentlemen of Middle-earth, I'm Ryan the Cyber Hobbit, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, and it's not already apparent, I'm a huge lover of the Lord of the Rings, and have been collecting items for I'd say about seven years now close to. In 2022, I made a tour video, and in that video mentioned that I'd be doing a new tour video every single year, and well, I missed last year, I ended up moving and had a bunch of other things going on, so... 2024 tour video, here we are. I'm gonna be going around the room and showing off all the items in my collection. I have about close to 200 things now. Probably won't mention every single item, but definitely all the major ones. The biggest change to my collection room is that it's no longer just a collection room. I have now incorporated my uh, computer into it and this is technically now my new office. So. I'm going to be going over not just the collection room, but a little bit about behind the scenes with how I made the room and kind of sort of explaining the, the computer setup because I know there might be a lot of people who would be interested in that. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Oh yeah, before I forget, you won't see any of the Weta Workshop Hobbit holes in this video. That's not because I got rid of them, I'm just planning on doing something a little bit special with them. If you want a hint as to what that is, I'll put a little graphic right here. Um, so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay, so we'll begin over here on what I've dubbed the sword wall. And specifically, we'll start with not a sword, but a bow. This is from United Cutlery, and it's the short bow of Legolas Greenleaf. This isn't his bow from The Lord of the Rings, rather from The Hobbit. Next is one of the newest items in my collection. This is from Mansion Props, the Barrowblade Sword of Pippin. One of the few items I own that actually has weathering. Next up is the longest elven sword I own, the United Cutlery Mirkwood Infantry Sword from The Hobbit. And above that are the Fighting Knives of Legolas from United Cutlery. Below that is the Rohirrim Sword of Eowyn. This still remains my favorite as I love the color scheme. Black, gold, brown, beautiful. Next is the first helmet I ever bought, the Rivendell Elf Helmet from United Color. And just below is the wooden sign for the Prancing Pony by the Blue Boar. Just to the right is the Rohirrim Sword of Aomer, Guthwina, from United Cutlery. And then to pair with it is the United Cutlery Helm of Aomer. And we may as well, at the very top, is the Double Oliphant Killer the Spear of Aomer. Next is the Battle Sword of Strider, aka Aragorn or Elisar. Toward the top is the Captain of the White Tower, Steward Prince of Gondor, the Sword of Boromir. Top and center is the Horn of Gondor. Yep, still horrible at this. And at the center of the wall is the Second Age Gondorian War Shield that comes with a Gondorian banner underneath. And just to the right, another new addition to my collection, the Sword of Faramir, second son of Denethor. Next is the 500-year-old Sword of Theoden, Herogrim, by United Cutlery. Followed by my favorite helmet in my collection, the Helm of Theoden. This one is gorgeous. Next is the Foehammer, the Beater, 
forged for the elven king of Gondolin in the First Age, Glamdring, the Sword of Gandalf. Next is the last of the Rahiram swords, for a character that just had a brief on-screen appearance, the Sword of Theodrin. Up above are the Fighting Knives of Tariel by United Cutlery. Below that is the last elven sword on this wall, used by the dwarven king under the mountain, Thor Nokenshield, Orchrist, the Goblin Gleaver. To the right is the Sword of Bard by United Cutlery. This is my second favorite sword as I love the design and the gold that is entwined with the subtle hint of green. Finally, the last sword on this wall, the Weathered Barrow Blade Sword of Mary by Mansion Props. And just to the left is another new piece, the High Elven Warhelm by United Gallery. And on the pedestal below is the Wooden Green Dragon Inn sign by the Blue Boar. Next I'll go over the items on the wooden wall you see here, though first I want to talk about the wall itself. So when I moved here, this wall didn't exist, and instead there were three windows against this wall. And, well, that was a problem, because I really wanted to wall mount not only my computer monitors, but lots of other things. So I decided to take the opportunity to not only solve the problem, but build it as a wooden wall to complement a warm-themed computer setup that I've had in my mind for quite some time. So when my father came to visit one weekend, he helped me build this as a freestanding wall that actually sticks about a foot or so out from the real wall behind it. This would allow me to make a very clean-looking computer setup, as well as serve the purpose of hiding lots of power cords and other cables, yet give me easy access to everything from behind the wall. It took a few days to build, but I think it turned out great in the end and really helps to give the room a warm and cozy feeling. So now back to the tour. Starting on the far left side is the United Cutlery Moria Staff of Gandalf. You can take the crystal out of the top and turn on an LED light that shines up to make the crystal glow. It's a pretty neat feature, but unfortunately it means the crystal can easily fall out. Better than nothing, I guess. Below that is the Helm of Isildur by United Cutlery. At the top of the wall are two 3D printed silhouettes I made of the Fellowship and Thorin and Company. And to the left of my desk is one of my favorite statues in my entire collection. Smaug the Fire Drake by Weta Workshop. This piece really is incredible. A very dynamic pose as he takes flight, and a base that helps to give a sense of scale. Below that is one of my own original 3D printed creations. A mix-up of Star Wars and The Lord of the Rings. A thing I call the Sauron Holocron. It lights up and can play many audio clips of Sauron throughout the films. Next is the thing that started it all for me. My very first collectible, Anduril, the Sword of Aragorn by United Cutlery. Hanging on Anduril is the Evenstar Pendant by the Noble Collection. And next to Anduril is another famous blade, Sting, the Sword of Frodo and Bilbo. And this is actually signed by the actor that played Frodo himself, Elijah Wood. Also similar to Andero, hanging on the blade is the One Ring, an extra piece that came with my Prime One studio, Frodo and Gollum. At the very center top of the wall is a piece that I get lots of questions about. This is by the Etsy store, Pace Ship Designs, the Gandalf Lamp, a 3D printed creation that is a combination of Gandalf's staff, the Even Star, and the One Ring. To the right is the Borrow Blade Sword of Sam by United Cutlery. It's oddly the sharpest of all my United Cutlery pieces.
And next to that is Narsil, The Sword of Elendil by United Cutlery. Obviously, it's yet to be broken, so it's literally an exact copy of Anduril, just without the inscription going down the blade. And just to the right is my favorite statue of my entire collection. The 1 4th scale Prime 1 Studio Sauron. This piece is simply incredible. Tons of extremely detailed armor, a base full of all kinds of damaged weapons and skulls and chest plates, standing with a very powerful pose, holding out his one ring of power. Extremely well done. And next to Sauron and Narsil is my second favorite helmet of my collection. Fittingly, the Helm of Elendil by United Color. The last item on the wall is the Hobbit Staff of Gandalf by United Color. Similar to the other staff, it has a light up feature that you can turn on with a small button on the side. And thankfully, this one can't fall out. On the side desk is another 3D printed creation of mine, a half-scale helmet of Sauron that I use as a headphone stand. It's definitely not perfect, but not bad for a two-day project. And now on to the next wall. First up is the 1-6 scale Weta Workshop Elendil. This is my favorite 1-6 scale piece, and might be the best Weta has ever done. To the right is the 1-6 scale Aragorn, Hunter of the Plains by Weta Workshop. A very epic piece that definitely captures the essence of Aragorn, even if the face isn't perfect. Below are the first three dwarves of Thorin's company, the 1-6 scale Nori the Dwarf, Ori the Dwarf, and Dory the Dwarf, all by Weta Workshop. To the right are the next four. The first dwarf I ever bought, Gloin. The seemingly rarest dwarf, Feely. The Beardless Dwarf, Keeley. And the Heart of Hearing Dwarf, Oin. At the bottom is the 1-6 scale Weta Workshop, Dane Ironfoot on Warbore. Whether you liked the CG character or not, it's hard to deny he had a very unique design and that translated into a pretty cool looking statue. I love the boar. Next was a long sought after piece for me that was luckily re-released by Weta, the capital of Gondor, Minas Tirith. So much detail in this one. Next are two Weta Workshop statues that are meant to be paired together, the 1-6 scale Enraged Golem and Bilbo Baggins. Just to the right is one of my other favorite 1-6 scale statues, the Weta Workshop Bilbo Baggins at Desk. I love this one because it's got nothing to do with war or battle, just a happy old hobbit at his desk. Below Bilbo is the Weta Workshop 1-6 scale Gandalf the White. I love the flow of his clothing and outfit, and the likeness to Sir Ian McKellen is pretty great. Up above is one of the newer statues to my collection, the 1-6 scale Galadriel of the White Council. A great pose and a great head sculpt. Easy to see Kate Blanchett. Next is the Vial of Galadriel, full-scale prop replica by Weta Workshop. 
a really cool recreation that glows from a small LED light in the base. Speaking of vile, next is the 1 4th scale Prime 1 Studio Frodo and Golem. This one is also very well done. A great likeness to Elijah, and Golem is as creepy as ever. On the top right is one of the most dynamic statues I own. The 1 6 scale Lord Elrond at Dol Guldur by Weta Workshop. A pose captured in the heat of battle against the Nine. Next is probably the most ambitious 1 6 scale statue Weta Workshop has ever created. The Dead Marshes Master Collection. Just the idea of bringing this scene to life in statue form is crazy but it's extremely well done. Five characters in one, featuring Sam, Golem, Frodo, and two spirits of the dead, lit up in multiple colors of LEDs, and even hidden faces in the water. Below that are the next three dwarves. First, the leader of the company, Thorin Oakenshield. After that is the dual axe wielding Dwalin the Dwarf. Followed by probably the wisest of the group, Balin the Dwarf. And the final three. First, Bofor the Dwarf. The, fat the fastest of the dwarfs. Bomber. And the last of the twelve, the axe stuck in his head, Biffer the dwarf. And at the bottom, the final dwarf in my collection, the 1 6 scale King Thror on Throne by Weta Workshop. Another amazing sculpt and paint job with lots of details and even the Arkenstone at the top. And the last 1-6 scale statue on this wall, the Ringwraith of Mordor by Weta Workshop. This is probably the best from their classic series. Such an iconic pose and great details like the weathering on the cloak. Turning our attention back to the middle are more prop replicas like the United Cutlery Gauntlet of Sauron. A wearable metal gauntlet that of course features the One Ring of Power. Another new and probably the rarest item in my collection, the Mansion Props Full Metal Dagger of Sauron. Next is probably the longest weapon in my collection, the Sword of the Witch King by United Cutlery. And at the center of the wall, the very large Mace of Sauron by United Cutlery. Included with the mace comes a Sauron-sized One Ring of Power. To the right is the weapon of one of the nine, the Ring Wraith Sword by United Cutlery. And the last weapon on this wall the United Cutlery Morgul Blade of the Nazgul. Another centerpiece on the wall, the half-scale Helmet of Sauron by United Cutlery. Clearly, much more detail than the half-scale helmet that I made. Next, we'll get into the 1 4 scale helmet series by both Sideshow and Weta. Orkhide, War Mask of the Morgul Lord, Urukai Berserker, 
Ringwraith of Harad, Orc Helm of Frodo, Battle Troll, Orc Squinter, Kamo the Easterling, my poor broken Easterling Helm, Urukai Captain, Orc Helm of Sam, Ringwraith of Khan, the Witch King, King of the Dead, Mouth of Sauron, Orc Muzzled Cage, or Crow Faced, Urukai Scout. And because I forgot, at the end of the right desk is the Cut Finger of Sauron with the Ring of Power by Prime One Studio, a bonus item that came with Sauron. And the last 1 6 scale statue of my collection, the Widow Workshop Bard the Bowman. One of the first 1 6 scale statues I ever bought. Another great dynamic pose, I just wish the arrow wasn't so easy to lose. Before the final wall, let's circle back to the sword wall curio cabinet to look at some Weta miniatures. The Moria Orc, Frodo Baggins, Gimli, Radagast, Smeagol and Athelion, Gandalf the Grey Wizard, the Noble Collection's Elven Brooch, and another long sought collectible, the spectacularly beautiful Crown of Aragorn. Saruman, Ringwraith, Golem Guide to Mordor, William the Troll, Tom the Troll, Bert the Troll. Rivendell Guard's Helm, Figures of Fandom, the Witch King of Angmar, Mirkwood Palace Guard Helm, Figures of Fandom, Aragorn, Mirkwood Captain's Helm, Figures of Fandom, Lurts. And now two Weta Workshop miniatures on a different scale. Gandalf and Golem. And since we're circling back to random things, how about some keys? Like the key to Bag End, the key to Erebor, and the Mirkwood Jail Key. Pipe of Feely, Pipe of Gandalf, Pipe of Bilbo, Pipe of Thor and Oakenshield, Pipe of Keely, and finally the last wall. Let's start at the bottom with the book collection. The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings box set, hardcover illustrated edition, a Middle Earth laser cut lamp, the Silmarillion, the Unfinished Tales, the Great Tales of Middle Earth, Galadrim Warhelm. Rohirrim Helm of Mary, Citadel Guard Helm of Pippin, the Weta Workshop and Noble Collection Gold Coin Sets, the Battle Eye Jewelry Arkenstone, and yes, I added the light from one of those ring boxes. Speaking of Arkenstones, at the very top is the Dream Sphere's Heart. Another Arkenstone replica that I think looks a bit more like the version seen in the film. It's actually kind of mesmerizing to look at under light. On the left side of the wall is the Mirkwood Double Bladed Polearm by United Cutlery. Above that is the United Cutlery High Elven Warrior Sword. I love the gold on this one. Next is the Sword of Keeley by United Cutlery. I love how the Dwarvish weapons have a stone look to them. To the right on some custom 3D printed mounts I made, Dwalin's Axes, Grasper and Keeper by Weta Workshop. In the middle are the collection of Gimli's five axes. The first is one of the throwing axes that I 3D printed. Next is the bearded axe from United Cutlery. Can you guess why it's called the bearded axe?
At the center is Gimli's battle axe. The actual main reason I decided to print Gimli's axes. Long sold out and way overpriced on the aftermarket, I made this for less than $100. It's amazing what you can do with 3D printing. To the right, Gimli's walking axe. Yet again, another money saver by 3D printing. Seriously, 3D printing is not hard. Try it. And the last Gimli weapon, his second throwing axe. 3D printed by me. Next is another stone blade, the Sword of Feely by United Cutlery. Just a bit down is the Hunting Knife of Feely by Weta Workshop. The last dwarvish weapon in my collection the Mace of Balin by Weta Workshop. This actually arrived broken, and I did fix it, but I still need to paint it. A bit to the right on a mount that I made, Hadafang, the Sword of Arwind and Elrond by United Cutlery. And one of the coolest swords saved for last, the Sword of Thranduil by United Cutlery. Next, I'd like to talk about one of the most important things in a display, the lighting. Around the room were four lantern sconces that were custom made by the Etsy shop, Black Market Interiors. I think it's pretty obvious they really helped to set the vibe of the room. They all have LED flame bulbs inside, so there's no need to worry about actual fire or burning your house down. And as I'm sure to get questions about this, the LED panels you see behind the monitors on the wooden wall are the Govi Glide Hexagon Light Panels Ultra, Lunar White Edition. Inside each panel are 129 LED beads that form a unique 3D cube-like shape that you can customize to any color you want. Though, for my display, I keep them on a warm color to match the room. The rest of the lighting you see around the room is a combination of Philips Hue light strips, Philips Hue play bars, Govi M1 light strips, puck lights, and mini spotlights. If you're curious about the lighting or the mount for the Gimli axes, this is actually a project that I created and programmed myself. And did you know it has sound too? Turn on Gimli. At the bottom of the mount are three buttons that I can use to control the light animation, color, as well as cycle through an SD card filled with MP3s. The world was young, the mountains green. And I realize this video is over 30 minutes now, but I want to end by talking briefly about the computer setup. So this is actually a dual PC and Mac setup. The PC is sitting on a custom riser I built with the leftover wood I used to build the wall. And my MacBook Pro sits in shell mode hidden under the left desk. I can switch between the two using the same keyboard, mouse, and speakers by using the built-in KVM that is included in the 57-inch Odyssey G9 Ultra widescreen monitor. By the way, if you're a programmer that needs lots of space, or you happen to make YouTube videos as a hobby on the side like me, I cannot recommend this monitor more. It's been wonderful. Also mounted under the desk are some USB hubs, card readers, Blu-ray drives, a 3D printed pull-out drawer, a DAC to control audio, a 3D printed place to store game controller, and a giant custom-made Lord of the Rings mouse pad to help tie it all together. If you made it this far, I can't thank you enough for actually watching this entire video. This is one of the longest and hardest videos I've ever made, 
and I spent multiple weeks filming and editing hundreds of clips, so if you think I'm worthy, hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing. If not, at least thank you for watching. I'm Ryan the Cyber Hobbit. Until next time, bye bye.